Damn, son, where'd you find this? It's like two in the morning right now, and um, I got the idea to do a reaction video to the um, Travis Scott concert. So we're going to get into that right now. Uh, it's fast and quick because it is pretty late and I'm tired. Now, investigators are hoping that video from that music festival tragedy helps them piece together exactly what went wrong. MSNBC anchor Lindsay Reiser joins us now with a minute-by-minute -minute breakdown. Lindsay, help us understand what happened here. Walk us through some of these videos we're seeing. Yeah, it really is incredible. And right now, we know that while a ton of evidence needs to be gathered, while facts need to be pieced together, including how many people were in the venue at yeah. the time, these videos really are giving us the closest glimpse we have yet into what happened. From the moment the doors to Astroworld opened, there was chaos at NRG Park. At 2 p.m., a stampede of concert goers exploded through security gates with dozens. See, that's sad. Like, you see how fast? Like, look right here. All right here. People on the floor, people on the ground. This guy, like, you can see, like, how fast he's running right now. Like, how fast he's running right now. Like, people right here, all this, look at this, people are lost, like, lost, lost, lost. And that's sad, because people don't know what's happening. People are just dying, so they don't know if they've been injected by the same needle that the other people were injected with. So, it just really brings, like, this, like, scare. It's just super scary. Like, I would be scared, too. Being trampled in the process. <laughs> As the clock ticked down what? to Travis Scott's arrival, tens of thousands of fans crammed into the venue to see the rap star perform. Where your feet were placed is where your feet stayed the whole night. Concert goers told NBC News. Damn. I, I read about that. Someone was saying, like, you could have moved. But look at these people. Look at these people. Look, they're all like. Social distancing. Look at this. There's like a whole ass like four feet right here. Is that around 8.30 p.m. the crowd began to compress and push, making moving, even breathing <laughs> difficult. Five, four, three, two, as soon as that countdown went to zero, it was just my, my rib cage was so squished that I couldn't expand my chest, expand my lungs to catch a breath. Just after 9 p.m., Travis Scott took the stage, and the atmosphere in... Look, I get goosebumps even looking at this, because I know I've been to a concert, and I know how it feels to, like, just that, be in that feeling, like, when it's that time, and it's just, like, so hype. So I know how, like, people feel. And, um, yeah, like, it just sucks. It just sucks. And the venue ignited electrifying an already feverish mob of fans. According to a video analysis by NBC News, by 9.12 p.m., people in the crowd could be heard screaming for help. <laughs> Houston police say they first received reports of people falling injured around 9.30 p.m. It was around that exact time when Travis Scott briefly paused the show right. after noticing an ambulance. So that's a little mosh pit. You see a little concert goers. This is what people do. They literally go to concerts and just start mosh pits, and that's what they do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Moments later, he asked fans to put a middle finger up to the sky if they were okay. If everybody's gonna put a middle finger up to the sky. Seconds after, a video was taken of 18-year-old Aiden Cruz. Yeah, I don't know about Travis Scott' behavior though. His his actions didn't like. It didn't go with the situation. Like, he didn't handle that situation well, but he handled it in a way in which he could avoid so much more, like, bash on his name. Because whether or not he decided to do something or not, it could have been a setup for him. What if someone wanted him to come off the stage? That would have been, like, a straight-up danger. Like, people literally do, like, destruction just to say they did it for clout i don't know this crazy shit people have ideas
<laughs> but that's dangerous on his part. But anyways, he decided to just continue his show, and that was just strange to some people, and honestly, it's strange to me. I would just leave. I would just leave. I, if I was the person, the artist, it was my concert, I would leave. I'd be like, this isn't safe. Uh, these people pay for my show. I'm sorry. Like, But that's why it's like, did he have something to do with it? Yes or no? That's another question. I can do another video on that, but let's get back to this video. Trying to notify a camera operator of the dangers taking place in the pit. Twenty-year-old Cynthia Lira found herself at the bottom of a pile of people, and felt she wasn't going to make it out alive. At first, I was like, "Help, help! I, I can't get up." And then when people started coming up to me, I was just like, she "I can't do it." I, I kept screaming, "Like help, help! Dead. Like I'm gonna die in here." At one point, Lira says she found herself holding the hand of another stranger trapped in the pile, both silently accepting what felt like an inevitable fate. It just felt like we were like in that together, like. It was such a tragedy, like it shouldn't have happened in the first place, but well, we were stuck in a situation, we couldn't do anything, so we're just like, okay, like, I guess. At 9.32 p.m., a young woman is seen attempting to alert the same camera operator. She steps in front of the camera, but the concert continues. By 9.38 p.m., a mass casualty event has been declared, and Live Nation agrees to cut the show short. Three minutes later, security officials are seen running through the pit. At 9.42 p.m., Travis Scott pauses the concert midway through a song and asks security to help someone who's gone unconscious. Wait, isn't that the guy from Fortnite? Hey, isn't that the guy from Fortnite? At almost the exact same time, part of the crowd can be heard chanting, Stop the show! Stop the show! Stop the show! As a member of the security team alerts the staff to multiple people without pulses. At 9.46 p.m., members of the Houston Police Department can be seen in the pit. By 9.54 p.m., Drake has taken a... Drake was there? What the hell? I didn't even know Drake was there. That's crazy. But anyways, I'm thinking of it like this. I'm thinking, like, people probably didn't even care. They are probably just stampeding over people just so they could get, like, TikTok videos and stupid shit like that. Like, people are probably just recording so much they weren't watching where they were going. So they were just not paying attention and didn't care. That's really how it is, like, out here. Like, people really don't give a fuck. Stage, and a number of concert goers are seen standing on top of an emergency vehicle. At 10.11 p.m., Travis Scott finishes his set and the concert ends. More than 30 minutes after a mass casualty event was declared, eight people in the crowd died that night, their ages ranging from 14 to 27. In statements to the public, NRG Park and Live Nation both said they're working closely with authorities as they work to investigate oh, no. the situation. Travis Scott took to Instagram <laughs> to express his condolences for the lives lost. I could just never imagine the severity of the situation. Across social media, survivors continue to share their stories, raising awareness and hoping for change. I really hope that my story and my word will help to put guidelines and prevention so like, this will never happen again. Again, it should have never happened in the first place. See, these user videos really do put into perspective how awful a situation this is in a way that you don't get just sort of reading and, and hearing some things. I do have to wonder, though, I mean, you mentioned that there were two pauses, at least, in the show. Any more explanation, understanding as to why the concert wasn't stopped after that mass casualty? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big question, right? And Houston Fire Chief Samuel Pena was on with today's Savannah Guthrie this morning. And essentially he said, look, we don't know right now exactly what Travis Scott knew. There's no evidence here um, that he encouraged people to rush the stage. We did see he stopped the show a few times, but it still took, like we saw, another 30 minutes yeah. for the music to stop completely. Um, of course, uh, Travis Scott, he, he took to social media, we saw, to express his condolences. His girlfriend, Kylie Jenner, also took to social media to do the same. She said they had no idea there were any fatalities until after the show. Wow. There's going to be a lot more to come from this story, obviously. Lindsay Riser, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It's just so tragic, the stuff that's been happening out here. Like, it's like, like rest in peace to everyone that's lost their loved ones, the people that passed away. I feel very sorry for them, and if that was, I would rather be in their shoes, honestly. I wish I could replace my life with one of theirs. You know what I'm saying? They, there was a woman who was, like, learning, uh, 
she was in school, she was a senior. There was a woman who they just learned passed away, and it was, like, a video of her family. And uh, she was a senior in school, and, like, honestly, she, she deserves more.